Well, we'll, we'll start with um, the one that I, it stuck out right away is the, the 49ers are hosting the Philadelphia Eagles this week. And um, I actually live uh, pretty close to Philly. Um, and I'm a, more of a sports fan than a specific team. Uh, but I can tell you that it, it's, it's not a good situation in Philly. And watching that game um, against the Bengals, the, the players can be happy that the fans weren't there because i never seen Doug Peterson uh, settle for anything. Uh, he's a, he's a, a gunslinger. He's a, a gambler. He's kind of like an Andy Reid. And because of all the injuries the Eagles have had now and, and some of the dysfunction they're having in executing simple plays, he's limited to what his play calling can be. Uh, but to settle for a, a tie kind of blew my mind uh, because 0-2-1 and is, in my opinion, is just as bad as being 0-2, uh, especially when you're playing the Bengals. But uh, going out to the West Coast, they're going to have trouble with the 49ers. Uh, did see yesterday that Garoppolo was, was back at practice, whether he's going to be upgraded to start is a whole other question. Uh, but even if he doesn't start, uh, my models are clearly on on the 49ers. Um, and, you know, the, the whole argument in Philly is it's Carson wants this, Carson wants that. It's his fault. It's his fault. You know, it's almost like listening to the, you know, the political debates. Um, everything is on him, but it really isn't. It's the the wide receivers are not getting separation from the defenders. And granted, they, they're out. Uh, Jalen Rager, who's the rookie from uh, actually, forget where he came from, uh, but it doesn't matter. He's a speed merchant. He's been timed at 4-2 in the 40, uh, hand time, but 10 coaches were there, and they all had the same time. Uh, so he's out. Alshon Jeffrey is out. Um, Alshon Jeffrey may be back this week, but these guys don't have a chance to practice either uh, and get some chemistry built. So without you know any solid wide receiver, they're – they're going to be dead in the water. You can't expect anything else to change. They were supposed to be able to attack the Bengals on the ground. Sanders goes 19 times for 95 yards. How? If, if you had told me the Eagles are going to sack Burroughs eight times, I would say, wow, they must have won like 15 points, 20 points. And yet – Wentz just struggling and struggling and struggling, 29 and 47, 225 yards, one TD. So how uh, have you looked into what 49ers are returning? Because it looks awful. And it didn't hurt them against both the Giants and the Jets. Do you see the Eagles as bad as the Giants and Jets? I, I hate to admit it because there's uh, a lot of my friends are Eagle fans. Uh, but, you know, I can't see anything really changing monumentally uh, when the Eagles have no – there's no reason to think they're going to do better. Uh, until they get healthy and and then they figure out the Wentz situation. And what I mean by that is the – it was so ironic. He played a pretty decent game. Um, but the news out of Chicago with uh, Foles coming into the game – who you may remember was the quarterback that took the Eagles to the Super Bowl when Wentz got hurt and won the Super Bowl. Um, he just he just produces a totally different chemistry with the players on the field, um, and he makes everybody around him better. Now, on paper, Carson Wentz is monumentally better than than uh, than he is, uh, but it's a team and it's eleven people and eleven players wanting to. Uh, attain the same goals and get the ball into the end zone as many times as possible. But on the Eagles right now, it seems to be a, a lot of um, individuality, I guess is what a, the word would be. So, um, you know, until they, they figure out, um, you know, first of all, how to get a ground game going, Miles Sanders is really their only running back um, and he's adequate, uh, but they have to get into a situation where Wentz can use play action pass. And play action pass right now doesn't do anything to the defenses. And you saw that with the Bengals. Uh, they, they tried play action pass and the, the defense didn't even react to it. So um, there is one system I wanted to mention too here. Um, and it's a, it's one of the monster ones here as I pull it up. Um, 
it's 27 and one on the money line. Okay, so that's 96% winning bets, uh, and that spans 10 seasons. So you're looking at a 27 and one situation, and it has to do with uh, teams that make mistakes and teams that don't. And turnovers is a big thing in in football. So this one is you're going to play in the money line uh, with mistake-free teams that are committing an average of 0.75 or fewer turnovers per game, and after a game earning a plus two turnover advantage, and now is facing a struggling opponent that has a negative 0.75 turnover differential. So differential, uh, for those that may have never heard that word, um, it's pretty common in our land, but point, if you're negative 0.75, it simply means you're turning over the ball on average three quarters of a turnover more than the opponent. So if you had a turnover differential of negative one, that means you have one more turnover than your opponent on average for each game that you've played. So the closer you get to, to plus one and minus one uh, opens up these opportunities like this system provides. Um, I looked at a lot of these games to the 28 games historically, and a lot of them were surprisingly close to this picture where you have a lot of injuries. Uh, starting quarterbacks are not playing. Uh, so I took that in consideration too, that you know, the 49ers are banged up also, but they're also two and one, but I believe their wins are against the Jets and the Giants. So that's a, that's a factor to consider too. Um, you can say the Eagles are gonna go out to the West Coast and they're a desperate team. Um, but I, I just, you know, the desperation should have occurred against the Bengals, a team that they should have easily beat 28-17, somewhere along that, that line. Um, but to basically play the whole entire game and not have a lead against a team that has a granted a stud rookie uh, at quarterback, it just blew my mind. I, I just couldn't understand what was going on. I like it. I like it. So the leading indicator books, two of them have moved it to seven and a half. It's uh, at seven at most books, but you have to go in and attack it right now. Is that what you did? You took uh, Niners full game minus seven? Yeah. Yep. Early in, early in the week, uh, it was at six and a half at a couple of places. Yeah. Um, but that, that was short-lived, and obviously because of the, the news that we were just talking about. The one thing that does bother me with the game is that the public is on the, on the 49ers. Um, and you know, generally speaking, you want to be on the book side of, of bets. The public doesn't lose every game. And this might be one where the smart money, well, it isn't. The smart money and the public are on the 49ers uh, from the stuff that I've been looking at. So that, that doesn't alarm me too much, but I don't like seeing a percentage of bets ever on any game get above 70% for a team that I have an interest in. Um, over the years, that this has been a red flag. Yeah, understandably so. Understandably so. And actually, the it opened at Bet365 at minus six, and minus six at plus 100. Minus six at plus 100 yeah. for the Niners. Yeah, plus 100 all right we got john ryan on the board niners minus seven niners minus seven john